From 1861 to 1865, the country was divided. The North versus the South. Industry versus agriculture. It was the Civil War, and to some, the greatest war in American history. It was the only war fought on American soil by Americans. During those four treacherous years, three million soldiers fought and 600,000 lost their lives. Amidst the Battle of the States, Howard County played an important role for the many men, women, and children during that time. GTV is on the go to take you on a trail through the past, a trail that hundreds of men traveled as they fought to maintain their way of life so many years ago. A trail full of tragedy, victory, and history. People from all over the world have had a fascination with the Civil War. Hello, I'm Adrian Felton, and I'm standing near the site of the Battle of Cooksville, where a small skirmish took place in 1863. Howard County tourism has laid markers like this one, identifying nine sites throughout the county that have some significance for the Civil War. Uh, Civil War Trails is a multi-state, multi-million dollar program that the Maryland Office of Tourism invited us to participate in. Uh, they were going to do a new map, um, starting with the riots in Baltimore, which is actually the first bloodshed in the Civil War, and then have the story told as it fanned out into the surrounding regions. So we went to a meeting in Fort McHenry, and we actively bid on our historic sites in, in Howard County, and we're just very fortunate to have nine make the cut. As you set your sights out to explore the trail, you'll gain more than a history lesson. To begin your journey, obtain this full-color brochure, available at any Maryland Welcome Center. They're available at the Howard County Visitor Information Center in historic Ellicott City and at Howard County Libraries. You can also request one online or by calling this 800 number. Inside, you will find important background information about the start of the war and a full-color map to get you on your way. The first stop on the trail is the Battle of Cooksville. Cooksville took place in the latter part of June 1863. It involves some very famous people, Jeb Stuart and the Confederate Cavalry, and some unknown Maryland troops known as the 1st Eastern Shore Infantry and Company A of the Purnell Legion Cavalry. And what happened, uh, the 1st Eastern, Eastern Shore Regiment was marching from Ellicott Mills to Frederick to join the Army of the Potomac. Jeb Stuart's cavalry was coming from Rockville with a hundred and 25 captured wagons trying to find Lee's army and, and heading towards what would be Gettysburg. And Company A of the Purnell Legion Cavalry were escorting two guns from Frederick to Relay. All this traffic collided on the Fredericktown Turnpike, which was a major highway at the time. It was night, the uh, artillery were moving towards Baltimore, the infantry were in camp, and Stuart's cavalry managed to collide with the Purnell Legion. In the confusion and the darkness, some shots were fired. One of Stewart's men were captured, and that's how the Union troops figured out who they were up against. And of course, they were greatly outnumbered. However, Stewart had bigger fish to fry. He needed to find Robert E. Lee in the, in the Army of Northern Virginia, so he just kept moving, and then, therefore all the Maryland Union soldiers survived the night. So Cooksville is Howard County's little battle, but it's a fragment of the history of the Gettysburg Campaign. Today, on and around this site, visitors can have their own experience with nature. Cooksville is in the western part of the county. Uh, the sign is near gorgeous farmland. There is nearby pick your own produce at some of our agritourism attractions like Lara Land Farm. You can play around the golf at any one of our surrounding golf courses. Um, it's just a, a gorgeous two lane country road to get to Cooksville. And you can really, when you stand there, get a feel for what it was like and what it looked like for those soldiers um, as you look out on those farms. Traveling southeast along Route 144 as you enter Main Street in historic Ellicott City, you'll see the little house on the hill. The little house is actually a one-room schoolhouse, the Ellicott City Colored School. 
It's also the site of the Decatur Dorsey Historical Civil War marker. Decatur Dorsey was an African-American slave uh, that was here in Howard County back in the 1800s, and he had actually served in the Civil War as part of the U.S. Colored Troops in 1864. And he was one of 22 African-Americans, I believe, who received the Congressional Medal of Honor, part of um, something that had been started with General Benjamin Butler, I believe. After the war, surviving African-American veterans helped build the Ellicott City Colored School in the 1880s. A historic Ellicott City is a great place for a weekend of shopping and dining or, or maybe even a ghost tour. The shopping is wonderful. If you are into antiques, there's wonderful antiques to find. Uh, wonderful places for home decor and home furnishings. Uh, you can get a wonderful sandwich or a fantastic steak or, or Mexican food or, or a local brew. Um, almost too many fun things to do in Ellicott City and the, it promises a return visit for most of our, our visitors. As you continue on Main Street, you'll come across the Thomas Isaac Log Cabin, the next site on our Civil War Trail. Well, when visitors come to visit us here in Ellicott's Mills, as it was known in 1770, one of the oldest buildings uh, that standing is the Thomas Isaac Log Cabin. And we tell the very earliest stories of the Ellicott brothers um, as Quakers coming to uh, the middle of the wilderness. Uh, to build a grain mill out of this kind of log construction. All of our early buildings were, were built out of log. As for the cabin, it was built in 1772 and was one of three residences of the Isaac family. The cabin was originally located on Merriman Street. However, after the Great Flood, the Isaacs moved it to higher ground to protect it from any future devastation. At this site, you can read all about Ellicott's Mills and how the town was divided between residents loyal to the Union and Confederate sympathizers. There are many interesting stories about Ellicott Mills during the Civil War. Here's just one. General Butler took Annapolis in the uh, early part of late April, late in April of 1861. Now, an interesting thing that Butler did while he was there was he heard that there was a thing called the Wyman Steam Gun. And this was one of the great what-ifs of the Civil War. Uh, in the Wyman's Railroad Factory in Baltimore, a steam-powered machine gun was built. Disguised as a piece of agricultural equipment, it was brought down the Frederick Turnpike through Ellicott Mills, and it was going to be turned over to the Confederates. Butler sent a special train from Relay to Ellicott City and intercepted this secret weapon. The uh, inventor managed to escape with some vital parts, and we and we never knew whether it would work or not, but uh, in a period of time when people loaded muzzles, loading muskets one round at a time, a weapon that could shoot 100 rounds a minute would have been something of an uh, advantage. So uh, this was a great, um, a great capture for Butler, and we'll never know whether it was a hoax or not, but uh, it's a good story, and there's a mock-up of it in Elk Ridge right down by the old... Uh, Toomey Lumber Company that was used in the 1861 reenactment in Ellicott Mills. Visitors from all walks of life can experience great stories about the Civil War when they visit the landmarks along Main Street. Henrietta Marie was her name, so they decided to call this Mary Land. The next stop on the trail will take you high atop the hills of Ellicott City. As you continue to travel down Main Street, make your way uphill on Church Road to the Patapsco Female Institute. The Patapsco Female Institute uh, has a story to tell where uh, the leader there believed that she could influence the war by, by influencing the daughters of the famous families of both the North and the South. Almira Lincoln Phelps believed that if the powers that be saw that her girls from different regions could live and work together, well, maybe the rest of the country could too. These ruins are all that's left of the Institute. From 1837 to 1891, this institution served young women from all across the country.
Today, visitors can stand on this hill and reflect on a time when young girls from a bygone era, clothed in their cotton dresses and wool cloaks, walked the grounds. Continuing on Main Street in Ellicott City, make your way down to the B&O Railroad Station Museum. At this site, you can read all about how the B&O Railroad Station was one of the first railroads in the country and how it became important to the Union War effort in 1861. Main Street, Ellicott City, like the rest of the country during the 1860s, was pretty divided. Even little boys and girls had different opinions about the war and its effect on their young lives. Today, visitors can come inside this museum that stands as a landmark to past wars in American history. Across the Patapsco River into Elkridge, this next stop on the Civil War Trail will take you into the Patapsco Valley State Park to the Thomas Viaduct. The Thomas Viaduct is the oldest stone bridge with an arc. It's still in use today, and during the Civil War, its use was vital to the war effort. At that time, the viaduct was used to get supplies to the troops and to block attacks to Washington, D.C. Today, you can view the viaduct from high points of the Patapsco Valley State Park and enjoy everything else this national treasure has to offer. In the Patapsco Valley State Park, there's uh, many miles of hiking and biking trails. There's horseback riding. You can go canoeing or tubing. Um, RVs are welcomed and camping. Um, it's a lovely state park and a place where you can really appreciate the great outdoors and, and again, learn the role of, of the viaduct during the Civil War. While you're still in Elkridge, the next Civil War trail stop will take you to the inn, the Elkridge Furnace Inn, that is. The sign at the Elkridge Furnace Inn tells the story of the town of Elkridge during the Civil War. Elkridge has many beautiful homes um, and a Main Street area also. The Elkridge Furnace Inn is recognized as one of the best places in the region to have a meal of a lifetime. Uh, in Elkridge, you can discover the story of the Assembly Hall and the role that it had there during the Civil War. Just recently, the Elkridge Furnace Inn was actually a private home, and a local Civil War historian actually used to spend his summers there with his family and has fond memories of going through the basements and finding buttons and other little mementos that uh, the soldiers inadvertently left behind. My great-great-grandfather was the station master at Relay, and he lived in this house approximately uh, beginning in the 1900s. And the family lived here in, until about 1975. So as a child, this was my playground. And now as a boy, Rummaging around, I found belt buckles, I found a 20-pound cannonball in the basement, so I found a South Carolina button on the back porch and an old drawer of a, of a table. So, obviously the Civil War touched this place, but not in a combat in nature. When you visit this stop on the trail, prepare to have that meal of a lifetime. Get an eyeful of the lovely historic homes, or visit one of the many antique shops. Stepping out of Elkridge down I-95 and traveling north on 175, you'll come across the Oakland Manor and the Howard County Center of African American Culture. The sign is at gorgeous Oakland Manor, uh, a place that very popular for afternoon teas and for special events, weddings and receptions. Uh, but it was also the home of Colonel Gaither, um, a Confederate, and also the area for the Howard County Dragoons to, to practice and to meet. Um, it's a rich story that we have to tell and an, an unknown story that that was the use of that mansion at the time. Um, right next door is the Howard County Center for African American Culture where you can learn uh, the story of the Underground Railroad, a related story, and, and learn about some of those places in Howard County. Our final stop on this Civil War trail takes you to historic Savage Mill. Savage was vital to the U.S. Army after the war began. The mill manufactured canvas for cannon covers and tents. Today, Savage Mill is vital to the people of Howard County and beyond. We're here at historic Savage Mill at the foot of the Bowman Trust Bridge where they have their Civil War trail marker for Savage Mill. 
You can wander through the hiking and biking trails nearby here at the river, go across the Bowman Trust Bridge, and enter into a 19th century cotton mill that's been lovingly restored that has 50 unique shops, uh, high-end antiques, arts and crafts, fun, funky furniture, um, wedding gowns, um, a French bakery, so while you're shopping, you smell bread baking the whole time. Afterwards, you can enjoy a meal uh, at the deck of the Ram's Head Tavern and, and overlook the river. It's a wonderful place for a weekend, a wonderful place for a day, and a great place to learn your Civil War history. So, there you have it. Howard County offers a lot for all to enjoy. There's so many things to see and do when you follow the Civil War Trail. So pick up a map and take a drive through the past. It's a part of Howard County's history and a part of America's history. For On The Go, I'm Adrian Felton. Being involved in this project, it is our hope that with the signs starting at the Inner Harbor, uh, the Inner Harbor has six million visitors there each year, that some of those uh, visitors become interested in the story and take a road trip out and see the rest of Maryland, the real Maryland, our, our gorgeous historic mill towns like Ellicott City and Savage, our wonderful parks like the Patapsco Valley State Park, some of our gorgeous homes that have had Civil War history like Oakland Manor or the Elkridge Furnace Inn, and, and really just uh, follow along the bugles with their map in hand and, and retrace the footsteps of the blue and gray and walk away with a richer experience of the county.